The NHL continues to battle a major COVID issue. It's officially now shut down any cross-border games. Will the Olympics be next? We'll discuss the situation coming up next. So welcome back to another video here Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have some breaking news from the NHL. The NHL has officially announced this a short time ago that they have officially shut down any cross-border NHL games until after the holiday break. So, of course, tonight is NHL roster freeze, which goes into effect until December the 28th, which is the holiday roster freeze, so the players can't be moved around, traded, etc., over the Christmas holidays, uh, which is a nice convenience for them. Uh, however, there's major other issues here going on that are going to have much more of an impact. Like I said, the NHL is now shut down the cross-border game, so teams in Canada cannot travel to the United States, and teams in the United States cannot travel to Canada. That's resulting in 12 additional games being postponed uh, because of the, uh, the number of games that were scheduled between uh, cross-country rivals uh, over the next few days until the holiday break kicks in, and that brings the total uh, number of NHL games that have been postponed here recently to 27. They've also completely shut down the Detroit Red Wings. So another team has been shut down. Uh, it's just a situation that continues to get worse uh, by the minute, by the day. Uh, and you have to think that the Olympics are also possibly here on the chopping block. We have over 100 NHL players in COVID protocol. That number grew here again today. Like the Capitals, for example, they're playing tonight, uh, but they're without TJ Oshie, who entered protocol today. They have Backstrom in protocol. They have Kuznetsov in protocol. They're already without Anthony Mantha. Like they, I think Alex Ovechkin is their only normal top six forward that's available. Even Tom Wilson's out injured as well. So, like, yeah, they have one regular top six forward in Alex Ovechkin in the lineup. And that's it. Otherwise, they have a lot of other players filling in the spots here in the gaps, which is, you know, it's not good. Like I said before, I understand that we've seen several NHL locations, mostly in Canada, reduce capacity at NHL arenas. So that's not good. That obviously cuts down the number of fans in the building, which ultimately has a big impact on the bottom line and the amount of money teams are making. Uh, obviously, there's more important things than just money, but at the end of the day, the NHL is a business. They've lost tons of money uh, over the previous shutdown last year that they're trying to recoup here. And if they lose a bunch more, that's just going to make things that much more difficult going forward between the players and the owners in the hockey revenue 50-50 split. And it's just going to make things a lot worse and prevent cap from going up. And it's, it's just bad overall for everyone involved here. However, like I said, the Olympics could be next. Now, the NHL and the NHLPA have put out a statement here basically saying, and I'll give you some couple screenshots from the release that came out. Essentially, it says they're going to continue to play through the 2021 22 NHL season. Uh, obviously, a number of games have been postponed. Uh, and even though they've seen a high number of players testing positive for COVID, they've seen majority of the cases be either asymptomatic or very mild cases. They haven't really seen any situations of more severe illness or disease, which is certainly a, a good positive sign. That's what you want to see. That I mean, the high vaccination rate, I'm sure, is helping with that cause as well. Uh, so, of course, that was another part of the reason they put it here in the statement that things are, are not getting worse than they you know could be otherwise. Uh, so they are going to continue to do that. And they are going to continue evaluating teams and only shutting down teams on a case-by-case -case basis based on what they can do. So obviously we have a number of teams shut down now. The thought process is if they can cut down a number of these games between the holidays, then at that point uh, a lot of these players that have been in protocol by the time they come out of the holiday freeze, they will be able to play and they should be hopefully through this uh, and even though there's still you know, bound to be more players that could test positive, it, they, they should be able to get a lot back and kind of have a fresh start and hope that things start to calm down here in the not-too-distant future. Now, it also mentions in this press release that they are going to be having more meetings between the NHL and the NHLPA and that due to the number of games that have been impacted on the schedule, they are discussing NHL participation at the Beijing Olympics and that a decision and an announcement could come as early as the next few days. So to me, that tells me that it's pretty much a given that the NHL players will not 
be going to the Olympics. To me, if they were still going to be trying to go, then I don't think they'd be making a decision here in the next couple of days that would say, yes, we're going. That, to me, wouldn't make any sense. They would want to wait until closer to the last minute to some of the deadlines uh, to make sure that the situation hasn't changed too much for the worse, whereas now I think it's changed for the worse enough uh, and we've lost enough games here due to uh, the schedule that the NHL and the PA are going to likely come to terms on the fact that they dream of going to the Olympics for Beijing in 2022. It's just not feasible anymore. I mean, plus we've heard a lot about the protocols that the uh, the Olympics are going to be having with the Chinese officials. Uh, you know, three to five week quarantine period if you test positive. It really could be extremely problematic and extremely bad for the NHL and their teams, uh, as well as, you know, for the players. They could be stuck in China for a long time well after the Olympics are even all said and done and completed. So to me, that's not a situation you really want to be in as a player. I understand for some of these guys, they look at it as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and they're willing to do just about anything they can to make it happen. So I'm sure that there's still players out there that would say they'd want to go but given the fact that we've lost this number of games here before the holidays there's no guarantee what things are going to be like after the holidays that i just don't see a scenario now where the nhl really can really plan on going at all and the fact that they're putting out a statement here uh, this is in the next couple of days there's no way they would come out with a statement saying they're going so that to me confirms 100 percent that it's pretty much a done deal the Olympics are not happening. As much as a lot of us are, you know, going to be bummed by that, it's it's for the best, I think, in the long term. I've thought myself for some time now that as much as I'd love to see this tournament happen and as much as I want to see best on best in the international community, I just it doesn't make sense anymore from a health and safety perspective uh, for them to go. It's just too much risk involved. And that far outweighs the reward, at least from my perspective. I understand the players' perspectives, and I'm sure some of them would probably feel a little bit different, and that's totally fine and respectable. But that's where things are at here as of today. Uh, it's, it's just wreaking its, its havoc here. Now, like I said, too, I have to wonder uh, what the NHL is going to end up reevaluating here in the new year. We're starting to see scenarios in other sports, for example. I believe, and quote me, don't quote me here, and I believe I could be like, you know, could we see a scenario where they change the testing requirements that you're only tested if you're symptomatic? I mean, that is a possibility. Like some like Steve Eisenberg said yesterday, as much as he doesn't want anybody to be sick and uh, he doesn't want this to get out of control. Uh, a lot of these people are, you know, no worse than a mild cold or don't have any symptoms at all. And it just, you know, in the past when the NHL before COVID existed, when there was a bad, there's always flu season. There was always bad flus and colds that was making its way through locker rooms and through the league. And that's how they handled it. It wasn't such a big thing, right? It wasn't a scary ordeal where they shut stuff down. So I know there are some out there that would like to see it get to that uh, kind of situation as well. But that's kind of up to the doctors guiding both entities here as we uh, continue to navigate our way through this pandemic and hope that it comes to an end sooner or later. But at this point, considering this newest wave of the newest variant of Omicron, it's uh, going to be a while yet before we're out of this, and it's really difficult to say when that is going to be. So these changes certainly raise some more questions. Will we see the return of the Canadian North Division? Will the NHL have to make divisional adjustments to continue playing out the second half of the season? It's a possibility, regardless of what the NHL thinks. The Canadian and U.S. border, uh, you know, that's uh, a lot of their control. The governments can kind of decide what they want, and if they don't want to allow allow uh, the back and forth between the teams going between the countries that's you know not something the NHL has control over and that could certainly force their hand here as well uh, otherwise I mean uh, it's a situation where they probably will try to resume going back to normal here in a couple of weeks would be my guess but it's you have to wonder or is the other possibility will we see a full league-wide shutdown here for a couple of weeks, you know, coming up. They do have a break coming in February if they don't go to the Olympics. You know, I know the NHL would try to like to make up some of those games, but will they be able to or really, really need to be able to benefit from another shutdown? It's, you know, that's a sad thing to think about. 
but it's a real possibility in my opinion. So uh, to me, these changes certainly raise a bunch of more questions that we don't know the answer to here yet. So let me know your thoughts. Do you see the NHL, uh, you know, having to rejig its alignment for the, to complete a second half of the year? Will we see another shutdown with a return like we saw, uh, you know, in the not too distant past here? I mean, hopefully we don't have to do a bubble playoff. The NHL, I don't really think would be all that interested in that given the vast amount of cost and obviously the lack of revenue that comes with it. But something's got to give here. This last wave is hitting everybody really, really hard and we need to try to figure out a way to best manage through this while keeping everybody's health and safety in mind. So let me know what your thoughts are on these latest announcements from the NHL down below. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.